Hello everyone, I am Lorenzo Agnolucci from the University of Florence and today I will present you our work that is titled Reference-Based Restoration of Digitized Analog Videotapes. Before going on, I want to thank my co-authors Leonardo Galteri, Marco Bertini and Alberto Del Pimbo. Analog magnetic tapes have been the main video data storage device for several decades but their content presents a unique and severe degradation that hampers their distribution and fruition by the general public. The main limitation of current approaches is that standard video restoration works are designed for digital videos, so they do not consider the artifacts caused by media issues. At the same time, all video restoration methods only focus on structural defects such as scratches. In this work, we propose tape, an approach for analog video restoration that takes advantage of the time-varying nature of the artifacts typical of analog videos by identifying the least damaged frames of each video with clip and then using them as references for the restoration. To do so, we develop a swing unit architecture that exploits the reference frames through our multi-reference special feature fusion block. Our approach involves two steps. In the first step, we perform frame classification. So we use clip for zero-shot artifact detection to identify the set of the cleanest frames of each video. Then, we carry out the reference-based restoration. To this end, we select the references from the set of clean frames and we use them to restore the input frames through our swing unit. Our network restores T frames at once by taking advantage of the information of both neighboring and reference frames, thanks to our MRSFF blocks. Our architecture is based on the Swin Transformer that allows exploiting the expressiveness of the attention mechanism while reducing the computational complexity. The multi reference spatial feature fusion blocks are inspired by the Swin Transformer blocks. They employ cross-attention and attention pooling to leverage the most useful parts of each reference frame. Intuitively, each input frame looks at similar parts of the reference frames and then uses them to restore the details that are lost due to the artifacts. Let's take a look at the experimental results. Regarding the synthetic dataset, tape outperforms all the baselines on all the metrics. In particular, we can see that tape achieves the best performance in terms of VMAF, which is a video quality assessment metric that also considers the temporal consistency. This proves that our videos contains less motion jitter than the baselines. Let's see some video restoration examples for the synthetic dataset. We compare our approach with the method proposed by Anja Lucci et al which is the best performing baseline for the synthetic dataset. Let's take a look at the first video. As you can see, there are a lot of clean frames in this video, and this shows the time-varying nature of the artifacts of analog videos. Let's stop at this frame, and we notice how our approach better restores the bot in the foreground, as our video contains fewer artifacts than the baseline one. Let's now take a look also at the second video. Also in this case, we have a lot of clean frames that can be used as references for the restoration. Please notice how severe the degradation in the input videos are. And this shows how difficult the analog video restoration task is. In this case, we can see that the bricks of the wall in the foreground are more easily distinguishable in our video compared to the baseline one. The table shows the quantitative results for the real-world dataset. Since the real-world videos don't have a ground tooth version, we have to rely on no-reference image quality assessment metrics to evaluate the performance of our approach. We can see that tape outperforms all the baselines for the contrick metric, while MAN achieves the best performance in terms of the Briske and Nike metrics. However, the qualitative results shows that MANA tends to add high-frequency artifacts to the restored videos, and we suppose that the Briske and Nike metrics are misled by these artifacts, 
and mistake them for high frequency details that are instead typical of high quality images. Let's take a look at a real world video example. In this case, we compare our approach with MANA, which is the best performing baseline for the real world dataset. As you can see, Despite its good quantitative results, MANA adds a lot of high-frequency artifacts to the restored video, thus lowering its quality. On the contrary, tape manages to restore the input video, and removes a lot of its artifacts and improves its quality. Please notice how the input video alternates between good clean frames and very degraded ones, and this motivates the main idea behind our approach, that is identifying and using the cleanest frames of each video as references to improve the restoration process thanks to our SwingUnet architecture that exploits these reference frames. In conclusion, we have seen that the main limitation of existing video restoration methods is that they do not consider the artifacts typical of analog videos. To address this problem, we propose TAPE, an approach for analog video restoration that takes advantage of the time-varying nature of the artifacts by identifying the cleanest frames of each video and then using them as references thanks to our SwingUnet architecture. Our experiments show that TAPE achieved state-of-the-art results on both synthetic and real-world videos. Thanks for your attention. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Bye!